Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Yasmin Qureshi and today remaining topics of analgesic and antipyretic will be discussed that is pyrazolone and pyrazolodiones, N-aryl and thranilic acid, aryl and heteros aryl acetic acid derivatives. These are the topics from the chapter analgesic and antipyretics. All these topics will be discussed from the book Wilson and Giswold, which is the textbook of organic medicinal and the pharmaceutical chemistry and rest of the illustration are from different websites from the internet. These are the contents. Parazolone and parazolidine dione derivatives. What is parazol? Parazol is a heterocyclic characterized by five membered ring of three carbon atoms and two adjacent nitrogen atoms. It is simple double unsaturated compound. Let's see their structure. These are the various parazol or parazoline, parazolidine, five parazolone or three five parazolidine dione. You can see in the these are the derivatives from the parazole. You can in the parazole structure, two nitrogen atoms are there and three carbons are there with the unsaturation. Okay, so if the unsaturation one of the unsaturation is replaced, it become parazoline. Okay, or if the if that uh, unsaturation this unsaturation is replaced, then it become parazolidine. Okay. And then on if the fifth position, the oxygen is there, then it is called 5-parazolone. Or if on third and fifth position, it will become 3-5-parazolidine dione. The first derivative discovered from the 5-parazolone, now known as antipyrene while searching for the antipyretic effect of the quinoline type. These are the derivatives of the 5-parazolone. This is the general structure of 5-parazolone. You can see in the general structure, there can be modification on nitrogen 1 or modification or uh, sorry substitution at nitrogen number 2 or third position or fourth position. So different derivatives are given. Uh, it can be from the 5-parazolone, the derivatives may be antipyrene or aminopyrene or dipyrone. We will be discussing all three one by one. Now the next uh, to discuss one of the derivatives which was mentioned uh, before, antipyrene. Antipyrene and the related compounds are prepared by the condensation of hydrazine derivatives with the various esters. Antipyrene itself is prepared by the action of the ethyl acetate on the phenyl hydrazine and subsequent methylation. Let's see their structure. This is the structure of the ethyl acetate when treated with the Phenyl hydrazine. This is the structure of the hydrazine. You can see this over here is the hydrazine. Okay, hydrazine, it is the hydrazine derivative, phenyl hydrazine, and it is uh, synthesizing antipyrene. Okay, this is the structure of antipyrene used as an analgesic or antipyretic. Locally anesthetic effect, antipyrene have local anesthetic effect, antiseptic effect as well as uh, any uh, antipyretic effect how it is produced, any abnormal temperature is reduced rapidly by unknown mechanism. The mechanism is not known how the temperature is normalized. Higher degree of the anti-inflammatory activity than aspirin and the phenyl butazone. This antipyrene having the higher activity than aspirin and the phenylbutazone. Toxicity, sometimes giddiness, drowsiness, cyanosis, coldness in extremities, tremors and sweating. Aminopyrene, this is the structure of the aminopyrene. You can see that from this basic structure, 
different substitution are there and the different derivatives producing analgesic antibiotic effect are there it is slow action than antipyrine as antipyretic and analgesic but much more powerful and its side effects last longer fatal cases have been traced to this drug many countries forbidden or restricted it this was the reason that i haven't explained much about its chemistry or the sar or cypregnam so because it is no longer being used because of the fatal cases and the another derivatives which we discussed earlier dipyrone it is also used in animal as an analgesic antipyretic and anti rheumatic this is the structure of the dipyrone you can see in the structure the thio group is there as well as the sodium is present in this structure these are the derivatives of 3,5 parazolidine dione in 3,5 parazolidine dione on the 3 and 5th position obviously oxygen is there that's why it's a dione and the substitution can be on uh, this nitrogen or the substitution can be on this fourth car carbon okay so either it can uh, the derivative may be uh, phenyl butazone or derivative may be oxyphen butazone in the phenyl butazone you can see at the, the r1 the phenyl ring is there okay one phenyl ring is over here another phenyl will be there in the phenyl butazone as well as on the r2 c4 h9 will be there similarly in the oxyphenyl butazone you can see oxy because of this oh is there phenyl butazone this is the structure of the phenyl butazone it is an analgesic used in the arthritis reduce swelling and spasm by an anti-inflammatory action other than the analgesic action it is NSAID prostaglandin inhibitor replaced by newer drugs with the less adverse effects so it was causing uh, various adverse effects that's why it was replaced by the newer drugs now used only on animal that's why i haven't discussed much about the phenyl butazone because it is no longer used in the human oxyphenyl butazone uh, oxyphen butazone this is the structure of the oxyphen butazone and it is a metabolite of the phenyl butazone with the same effective indication side effects and the contraindication sar of 35 parazolidine dione the one two of the 35 parazolidine dione which we discussed earlier uh, the sar of this whole class uh, will be discussed now uh, the first point is pharmacological activity of these derivatives are closely related to their acidity the acidic H at fourth position okay over here the acidic H is responsible for the acidity the uh, the dicarbonyl function at three and fifth position okay three and fifth position enhance the acidity of the hydrogen at the fifth position so these two carbonyl are responsible to increase the acidity of this fourth position so the presence of these two oxygen is important for the function of this class next point is eliminating the acidic proton at the fourth position abolish anti-inflammatory activity so if over here there is the replacement of the proton or hydrogen it will abolish the anti-inflammatory activity of this class or any of the derivative enhancing the acidity too much leads to the decrease in anti-inflammatory activity while other effect like uricosoric effect and the sodium retention so if the acidity is increased on this position or the acidity of this uh, uh, group is increased 
it may lead to decrease in the anti-inflammatory activity as well as the side effects such as uricosuric what is uricosuric refers to the uric acid in the urine as well as the sodium retention in the body next point single alkyl group at the fourth position enhance anti-inflammatory with most activity being given by n butyl so if on this position there is the uh, there is a substitution of the alkyl group it will enhance the activity and the most uh, activity is observed by the n butyl fifth fifth point that substitution of two phenyl thioethyl group at the fourth position produces anti gout drug that is sulfenpyrazone means at the fourth position if the two phenyl thioethyl group is added the drug is prepared which is used in the gout this is the structure you can see that over here at the fifth position one two three fourth at the fourth position what is present why two phenyl two phenyl thioethyl this is the phenyl this is thio and this is the ethyl group present at the second position okay next derivative next class that is an aryl anthranilic acid this over here you can see is an anthranilic acid having the carboxylic acid and the amino group making anthranilic acid and this over here is aryl so the name is an aryl anthranilic acid anthranilic acid molecule consisting of benzene ring ortho substituted with a carboxylic acid and an amine as a result you can see the ortho substitution is there uh, as a result of containing both acetic acid and the basic functional group acidic and the basic functional group this compound is amphoteric Aryl is the functional group or the substituent derived from the aromatic ring such as phenyl or naphthyl. So the first uh, N aryl anthranilic acid we will be discussing mefenamic acid that is most commonly used uh, in our daily life uh, with the name postan. You can see over here this is the structure of the mefenamic acid. Um, how the mefenamic acid is N aryl anthranilic acid. on the anthranilic acid on the n the aryl group this is the aryl group which is added to it let's see its iupac name 2 2 3 phenyl amino benzoic acid okay so on the benzoic acid this two is 1 2 on the 2 2 3 that is 1 2 3 so the methyl are present on 2 3 and this is the phenyl ring which is this phenyl ring is present amino and this over here is the benzoic acid okay another name is n 2 3 xylyl anthranilic acid okay we discussed before the anthranilic acid what is xylyl xylyl over here is the aryl what is xylyl it is the any of the several isomeric monovalent radicals c8h9 derived from three xylenes by the removal of the hydrogen atom specifically specially A, red, a radical of the formula CH32 C6H3 what is xylene xylene any of the three isomeric dimethyl benzene used as a clearing agent cold cleaning in the electroplating paint manufacture paper coating 
these are the structure of the xylenes xylenes are the dimethyl dimethyl benzene means on the benzene two methyl groups are present if the methyl group are present on one on two position one two methyl or one three dimethyl or one four dimethyl whereas in xylyl one of the one of the hydrogen is removed so over here with xylyl is present two three xylyl or you can say one three the uh, the the methyl are present adjacent okay so it become xylyl because of the removal of the hydrogen atom from the benzene ring each of three compounds have central benzene with two methyl groups attached as the substituent this is talking about the uh, xylene Mephenemic acid appears to be first genuine antiphlogistic analgesic discovered since aminopyrene. Antiphlogistic means that prevent uh, the inflammation. Um, a wide variety of the aryl and threnylic acid were screened for the analgesic activity if they showed significant anti-inflammatory action. it has become evident that the combination of both effect is a rarity among these compounds both effect means the reducing the inflammation as an as well as an analgesic mefenemic acid in a dose of 250 mg is superior to 600 mg of aspirin as an analgesic and that doubling the dose gave a sharp increase in the efficacy lower incidence of side effects than aspirin used in the management of the primary dysmenorrhea which is thought to be caused by the excessive concentration of the prostaglandin and the endoperoxides dysmenorrhea is the uh, menstrual cramps inhibit the action of the prostaglandin it is uh, explaining the mechanism how the mefenemic acid work it inhibit the prostaglandin prostaglandin in the later slide i have also mentioned that it is responsible for the inflammation or pain so mefenemic acid is inhibiting the prostaglandin it is a non narcotic analgesic and mefloconamate sodium is another member of this group let's have a look on its structure this over here is a structure just to just to show you the difference between the mefenemic acid and one of its derivatives you can see on the carboxylic acid the um, the sodium present as well as uh, in the xylyl one of the methyl is replaced okay in this structure two chlorine are there so it is the, this is the uh, mefenamate sodium which is the derivative of this class okay the next uh, category is the aryl acetic acid derivatives just for your remembrance i have put the structure of the aryl as well as the acetic acid the derivatives which are included in this class include uh, indomethacin solindec tolmitin sodium zo zomiprex sodium ibuprofen namoxirate naproxen phenoprofen calcium ketoprofen flurbiprofen diclofenac sodium potassium and sodium pyroxicam so the first derivative to be discussed is the indomethacin over here we have the structure of the indomethacin as well as the from the name as it is indicating indo that is the indol the structure of indol is also given indol is the aromatic heterocyclic organic compound it has a bicyclic structure consisting of six membered benzene ring fused to five membered pyrrole ring so over here six membered benzene ring is there and this over here is the pyrrole ring which is making indol and you can see in the indomethacin this indole is there and there is various substitution on that indole ring making then analgesic antidepressant indomethacin 
widely used as an anti-inflammatory analgesic in rheumatoid arthritis, spondylitis and osteoarthritis and to lesser extent in gout. It is re recommended to the, those patients by whom aspirin cannot be tolerated and in place of the phenylbutazone in long-term therapy for which it appears to be less hazardous than corticosteroid or phenylbutazone. What is spondylosis? Inflammation of the vertebrae type of arthritis that affect the spine and cause fusion of some of the spine vertebrae. So the next is the ibuprofen. Over here we have the structure of the ibuprofen. You can see in this iopagnate, this is the uh, propanoic acid because ibuprofen is the propanoic acid derivative. And in this we have the propanoic acid. And on the second position, 1 and 2, the substitution is there. Which substitution is there? There is a substitution of 4, 1, 2, 3. So, at the fen in phenyl ring at the fourth position, the isobutyl is there. This over here, the structure of the isobutyl. Uh, the butyl is not present in the straight chain. You can see the branching is there. That's why it is called as the isobutyl phenyl, phenyl propanoic acid. I ibuprofen is a monocarboxylic acid. Only one carboxylic acid group is present. That is propanoic acid in which one of the hydrogen at position 2 one of the hydrogen at position 2 is substituted by 4,2-methyl propyl phenyl. Okay, 2-methyl propyl phenyl. Over here, the another IUPAC name is given. They are considering this as a profile and this as a methyl. And 4 is the position of the phenyl ring that at the this 4 that it is substituted on the propanoic acid. It is a NSAID with the anti-inflammatory analgesic and the antipyretic effect, lower incidence of side effects than aspirin, approved for use in the primary dysmenorrhea. In this series of compound, it was noted that the alpha methyl group on the acetic acid enhanced the properties. You can see over here the methyl group is there, that is the alpha a methyl group on the acetic acid enhancing the its potency. If the hydrogen is there in place of the methyl forming ibuphenic which is less potent. Let's see the structure. You can see over here the methyl group is missing which is there in the ibuprofen and this is less potent. This derivative is less potent and cause hepatotoxicity. Now the mechanism of action of ibuprofen that it inhibits the COX-1 and COX-2 resulting in decreased formation of the precursor of prostaglandin and thromboxane. This leads to decreased prostaglandin synthesis by the prostaglandin synthetase. Ibuprofen also cause decrease in the formation of thromboxane A2 synthesis by thromboxane synthetase thereby inhibiting platelet, platelet aggregation. So the mechanism mentioning similarly like the other most analgesic that it inhibit or decrease the concentration of the prostaglandin and the thromboxin. Okay, thereby reducing the pain and uh, fever. Let's see what is prostaglandin. Prostaglandin have been found in almost every tissue in human and other animals, they participate in wide range of the body functions such as contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscle, the dilation and the constriction of the blood vessel, control blood pressure and modulation of the inflammation. So, uh, when the pain is there, maybe the contraction of the smooth or the muscle is there, so the, to inhibit the prostag by inhibiting the prostaglandin, the relief in the pain is observed or uh, the prostaglandin also causing the inflammation. So by inhibiting the prostaglandin, the inflammation is reduced. Thromboxane uh, is named for its role in the clot formation. Thrombosis, which is the process called of the clot formation. 
that's why the name is taken from the thromboxanes the two major thromboxanes are thromboxane a2 and thromboxane b2 thromboxane is a potent vasoconstrictor and stimulus for platelet aggregation and reduce the vasoconstriction and the platelet aggregation uh, by the definition you can easily understand when the thromboxane is inhibited the mechanism of the platelet aggregation as well as the vasoconstriction and the platelet aggregation is also inhibited okay so the next uh, chemical agent from this class is naproxen we have the structure of the naproxen over here with this iupac name from the iupac name you can see this is also the derivative of the propanoic acid okay and in the propanoic acid uh, on which position the attachment is there on the second position so two on the second position two attachments are there the naphthalene ring is there as well as the methoxy there okay so the naphthalene on the naphthalene on which position the methoxy is there 1 2 3 4 5 6 so at the 6 then 7 8 9 10 at the sixth position the methoxy is there naphthalene is obviously attached to it so while is there naphthalene is not attached on the first position it is attached on the second position so two il propanoic acid this over here we have the propanoic acid for your remembrance propanoic acid is the naturally occurring carboxylic acid with the chemical formula which is mentioned it is similar to aspirin in it it is as in its mechanism that is it is the inhibitor of the prostaglandin and prolong the blood clotting time not recommended for the pregnant or lactating women or in the children under 16 naproxen is used to relieve pain from various conditions such as headache muscle ache tendonitis that is inflammation in tendons dental pain menstrual cramps inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and fever it also reduces swelling and joint stiffness caused by arthritis and the gout attacks it is taken orally Naproxen mechanism of action. Uh, naproxen is the non-selective Cox inhibitor. As an NSAID, naproxen appears to exert its anti-inflammatory action by reducing the production of the inflammatory mediators called prostaglandin, which we uh, discussed before. It is metabolized by liver to inactive metabolites. Common side effects include dizziness, headaches, bruising. allergic reactions heartburn and stomach pain severe side effects include increased risk of heart disease stroke gastrointestinal bleeding or and stomach ulcer the heart disease risk may be lower than with other nsaids it is not recommended in people with the kidney problems use is not recommended in the third trimester of the pregnancy or uh, usually it is not uh, uh, as in the previous slides we discussed they are not recommended in the pregnancy next is the diclofenac potassium and sodium two salts of the diclofenac that is uh, diclofenac potassium and sodium we have the structures over here with uh, the uh, sodium and the potassium rest of the structure you can see is exactly same from uh, the you can see you can uh, in the acid carboxylic acid this sodium or the potassium is attached potassium salt is faster acting acute it is used in the acute pain primary dysmenorrhea chronic uh, rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis and spondylitis uh, benzene acetic acid derivative non steroidal uh, anti inflammatory drug with the analgesic antipyretic and anti inflammatory activity it is again this uh, is the non selective irreversible and the competitive inhibitor of the uh, cyclooxygenase subsequently blocking the conversion of the arachidonic acid into the prostaglandin precursor this lead to an inhibition of the formation of the prostaglandin that are involved in the pain inflammation Okay now the last topic is morphine though morphine is not included in your syllabus uh, the topic which is mentioned in your syllabus is quinoline derivatives 
but the quinolines are mostly used as uh, the anti malarials or anti bacterial we will be discussing quinolines in under the chapter anti malarials in the uh, next semester but to but uh, to uh, if we see the analgesic and the uh, analgesic and antipyretic chapter you will find morphine as one of the uh, first topic which is mentioned as in morphine is one of the oldest and most effective uh, analgesic agent and to give you to explain you how it is not a quinoline derivatives i have this uh, uh, structures over here you can see that there are two type two types of basic structure usually are recognized recognize among the opium alkaloids more morphine is uh, uh, is obtained from the opium plant and two types of derivatives are obtained from the opium one is the phenanthrene type that is the morphine and the second is the benzyl isoquinoline type that is the papaverine so the this uh, uh, isoquinoline type is not the morphine and the uh, quinoline type analgesic are also not available so for your uh, uh, for your remembrance and for your understanding that how the structure of morphine is and how the structure of the papaverine i just gave i have just uh, given you this slide for your easiness let's uh, see the few of the characteristics of morphine and that and the and this uh, lecture morphine is uh, basically uh, discovered in the early 19th century it is obtained from opium which is partly dried dried lactose from the incised means means that is cut uh, cut undried capsule of the papaver somniferum opium contains numerous alkaloids of which morphine codeine oscopine i think you have already uh, read this in the pharmacognosy and papaverine are therapeutically most important but the action of opium is principally due to the morphine content as an analgesic opium is not effective as morphine because of the slower absorption but it has greater constipating action and thus it thus is better suited for anti diarrheal preparations in tribute to its remarkable potency and action on morphine it has remained alone as an outstanding analgesic from the plant source